Hi everybody, Phyllis Moore here, Philosophically Speaking. I hope you're having a wonderful day and thank you in advance for clicking onto my channel. I do hope that you will um, also check out the like, share, subscribe, comment buttons. Um, you know, yesterday in my post, I talked about controversy and, you know, I am bubbling up. You know, I have an opinion and, and I'm going to give you a little backstory on that because I am on the threshold of feeling, of thawing out, of sharing, of being able to just be authentic. And I thought I had, I thought I was, but I'm going to just confess some things to you. And I got a little teary as I started and, and I may go there again. And I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a bit emotional because for my entire life, life that I'm cognitive of, I have been such a pleaser. You know, we start out as babies and children wanting to get the approval of our parents and, you know, trying to avoid hearing no or having our hands slapped or getting punished or sent to our room or, you know, oh, man, I didn't get to do that or I didn't get that pair of shoes I wanted or I didn't get to stay up late and watch that TV show or whatever. All the things that we are disciplined as we are guided into being better human beings and, you know, if you're fortunate to have parents that care about you and your health and your well-being and your education and all those things. But I have been a pleaser voluntarily absolutely voluntarily and that spilled over into education it spilled over into relationships it spilled over into friendships and yes even into my career the bulk of my career was trying to make people happy and make people like me um, to the point where side note like relationships you know it's like as long as I was you know the docile submissive you know controlled, if you will, um, what, what is the word I'm looking for? Nice, you know, you're, you know, you're nice, pleasing, you know, as long as you're the pleasing wife, daughter, child, um, worker, co-worker, you know, you do everything that, that, you know, they asked you to do and you, and more. Yeah. I thought, okay, I've got this knocked. I don't know that I was conscious you know, in, in making this connection, but I think I was going to be this great wife, this great worker, this great, um, you know, friend, this great Christian. I'm doing everything I can to please. And as long as you please, people love you, right? They love you. They like you. And I'm going to just kind of zone in and, and be more focused at this point on the career aspect because, you know, as long as I would go places and literally this happened, I would have people say, you know, oh, this is Phyllis. She's here to write a story. She's, she's here to write a positive story on us. And I, I would cringe because I thought, you know, okay, if you like it, that's great. If you appreciate it, that's great. But don't set me up with these people. You know, you're trying to make them comfortable because, oh, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult to be a reporter where you want people to cooperate, you want them to trust you, you want them to give you information. But you know what? Every story is not going to be positive or negative. You're telling the truth. And I I know this is probably beating a dead horse for any of any of you who know me, but I have always tried to be several things. Fair, accurate, representative. Not my news to tell, not my story. So whether I'm talking to a, a doctor, a lawyer, a, a hospital administrator, you know, someone that's going to talk about, you know, some health issue or education issue or legal matter. I am going to report what you said. Doesn't matter to me. It never has. I don't really care. I'm not going to sit there and say, no, 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 you must say this. I don't control the narrative. I just want you to tell me the information. Let the reader decide if it's true or untrue or if it's factual or not. It's not my job to slant it, sway it, change it, finesse it. I just have to be a straight shooter. Now, granted, I wasn't in the big arena. You know, I was in, in smaller, smaller markets, community newspapers, you know, smaller venues as far, you know, I mean, I've worked in larger areas, but, you know, I'm not on the forefront where everyone has to, you know, see me day and night on the national news. That's not happening. But what has always mattered is trust. If people who read and see and hear things that you put out there and they don't trust you, well, it matters. It matters to me because it is my 
reputation, it is my character, and it is me. Well, I'm no longer in that arena now, but I will tell you, um, I guess I just keep finding myself, as I've thought out during the pandemic, I'm not in the fray, I'm not submitting, you know, and having things published in that arena. And I have been able to sit and look and, and see things differently. You know, now I understand what is meant by fake news. Now I understand what is meant by, you know, we're all going to, you know, if you, if you have everybody saying the same thing, that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, it must be the truth. No, it just means they're all you know, facilitating that narrative. And it's fine, whatever you want to believe. I'm not, I'm still not a political animal. But let me tell you something, just, it's kind of funny. I have covered so many entities, this party, that part. I've covered so many diametrically opposed factions. And each time I've had the same approach. I will try to be fair, I will try to be honest, I will try to be representative. And to the point, and it's, this is kind of facetious, but it's true, I've gone places and interviewed people and represented the story, and my tendency, I will nod, I will be pleasant, I will ask questions, I will give you as fair treatment as I humanly can. And when I do that, I've walked away, and you, you feel like there, and it's not, it's not to elicit information. It's not to, oh, well, if I do this, then they will, you know, they'll give me trade secrets. No, it's because I want them to feel like they are represented accurately, you know, as if they were telling their own story. I don't want to change who they are. I've been misquoted. I have been misquoted and misrepresented in the press, and it did not make me feel good, and I didn't like it, and it was hurtful because I felt like that's not what I said at all. That's not what I meant. That's not who I am. So I took that on the road and said, I will really, to the utmost of my ability, try not to do that to anybody else. And so I have, but I, I jokingly say, you know, if all the parties and all the different people that I've interviewed over the years got together and compared notes, they would probably go, oh, she, she believes like we do. No, she believes like we do. Well, I know, no. Be, and they'd all go, oh, she's a liar. I'm not a liar. I'm a reporter. I have to be neutral, I have to be removed. And so now that I'm a, just a, I'm not a public figure, I'm just a person, um, you know, so I posted something, you know, I'm not gonna go far afield with this, but I posted something on my social media and it was just a fact, just a fact. Because, and it wasn't even that I was going to do this, uh, you know, I had no vested interest, but somebody posted a picture of the newspaper back in 2000, the year 2000, when there was the big election between George Bush, the junior, whatever, and Al Gore. And initially, I mean, it went back and forth for like a month and a half, whatever, it went back and forth. I don't even remember because I, I don't pay attention to that. Politics is not something I cover. I knew what was going on. I couldn't tell you. I honestly couldn't tell you except people kept calling me as a friend and they'd be telling me, oh, blah, 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 blah. It's his, you know, one day Gore had it, the next day Bush had it. And it went back and forth for a long time. But I had forgotten that there was actually newspapers printed that said President Gore. And I, in, in all of this that's coming out now, um, had someone that I know not ask me, but ask my husband, you know, was there a President Gore? And I thought, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know, what was there in our history? And then someone posted the, 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 a picture of the newspaper and I put it, you know, in there and I said, remember this, remember when mainstream media called the election before everything was official? And someone, someone who has the power to hurt me, um, Posted, posted a response and said, I thought you were mainstream media. I'm sorry, I'm giving it a tone. I thought you were mainstream media. Does that mean we can't believe what you report? And I wrote back and said, bingo. That's exactly, you know, you cracked my code. That's exactly why I'm not in it. Now, see, I could sit there and say, oh gosh, my bad. But see, I'm not mainstream media. Mainstream media is the people that are in the upper echelon that everyone, you know, the, the main entities that everyone either trusts or doesn't trust. But I'm not gonna split hairs. I chose that word. I'm a word person. I'm not stupid. I chose that word because I thought, you know, this is a, but I'm not going to split hairs over it and say, oh, no, that didn't apply to me. You can apply it to me if you want. But see, I have always chosen my words carefully and I have 
really, if you knew how many stories I didn't report, how many stories I would not do and did not do, I'm not saying I'm some Saint Joan of Arc or anything, but there are countless stories I could give you examples of that I refused to do or didn't do or because I, you know, for, I got out of because I didn't want my name on them and because I wasn't going to put a half truth out there, even though, you know, some other people, because I knew people trusted me and that mattered. So, you know, I look at the, in the light of day, yeah, that, that kind of hurts my feelings, but I also know it's not personal. And I also know that it wasn't me interjecting myself into the story. I know it's okay to have an opinion. It's okay to have a thought and a belief. And sometimes when you're not pleasing people, but you're being true to you and you're being true to your God, because ultimately what I am is a truth seeker. That's all. I'm a truth seeker. And I am praying, like probably many of you, that we will all accept the outcome, whatever that is. We don't know what the outcome is. It's just like real life. We don't know what the outcome is right now. So I'm trying not to let it hurt me. This is an opportunity for me to grow, for me to say, okay, Lord, what are you going to teach me? And what what am I going to be used at? Because maybe, maybe I need to rise up and be strong and accept that not everybody's going to like everything and I can't please everybody. And that's okay. That is really okay. So God bless you today. We'll talk more. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back again soon. Bye.